Using the locked 3D view feature available in Revit 2012, we can annotate our 3D views to enhance design communication and better convey our design intent. Let's see how we could use that feature to create 3D details for this building model. To create construction details for our project, we'll typically switch to one of the 2D views, for example, one of the section views, zoom in on an area, and then use callouts to create a subview that isolates an area of the project. We can double click on the callout head to open that new view and zoom in. Within this callout view, we can add annotations to help explain the details of the building model. For example, we could add dimensions that show the measurements between the key building elements We can add tags to identify the elements seen in the view. We can also add text or keynotes that help to explain the items seen in the view. For example, we could add a materials keynote to the wall assembly, choosing the material for the wall, and have that keynote reference the wall assembly back to a specific section of a specification or a work breakdown structure. But even with all this annotation, these views are still relatively flat compared to the 3D views that we use to generate them. Let's take a look at how we could create a 3D version of the same detail. To create the 3D detail, start by duplicating the default 3D view. We'll want to create a new non-perspective view to use for our detail. Let's rename that view to reflect its new function. We'll call it 3D Wall Assembly Detail. Next, we'll change the viewpoint for this 3D view to match the 2D detail. To do that, open the steering wheel widget and right click on it to reveal a menu of options. Let's choose Orient to View and then from the submenu we can choose a 2D view that we'd like to reorient this 3D view to match. Let's zoom in closer and orbit this around a bit to see what's been created. First zooming and then orbiting Let's pan it up a bit too. You'll see that what's been created is a 3D view that's using the section box to match the cropping of the 2D detail. And we can use this 3D view as the basis for creating a 3D detail. A new feature was added to Revit 2012 that lets you lock a 3D view, and by locking a 3D view, you're then able to add annotations to it. To lock a 3D view, go to the control bar and look for this icon. It looks like the default 3D view symbol, but it also has a lock in front of it. And if you click the icon, you can save the orientation and lock the view. With a 3D view locked, we can now start adding standard annotation elements to the view. For example, we can add text annotations. Let's choose the text tool and the two-step leader. We'll call this wall assembly A. We can also add tags, for example, to tag those window elements again. Now before we add the tag, it's a good idea to check your visibility graphics settings because the window tags may not be turned on in 3D views. Let's turn on the window tag visibility, and now we can choose the tag, choose the window, then pull the tag out to indicate what that window type is. We can also add keynotes 
showing the element, the material, or a user-defined keynote. Again, let's go for the material. We'll choose that layer of the material and associate that with this specific section of the work breakdown structure. Again, the advantage of using keynotes is that it lets us standardize our notes and ensures consistency. It would be nice to also add keynotes to describe the interior layers of the wall, but it's a little hard to do because the layers are sandwiched together. To add notations to a multi-layer element, we can create an exploded view. To create an exploded view, let's use Revit's new Create Parts tool to break apart the layers of that wall assembly into individual construction elements. We'll start by choosing the wall element in our 3D view. In the Contextual Modify menu, we can go to the Create Parts tool to break that wall into individual parts representing each of the different material layers. Then we'll check the parts visibility parameter for this view to verify that we're showing the parts alone, not the original and not both. We can now select an individual part of the wall and choose to show its shape handles that will let us change the boundaries of that part element. We're not able to see the shape handle for this particular part because its front boundary is being clipped by the section box. We'll pull on this control to move forward, then reselect the part and push back on the shape handle to expose the layers underneath. Let's also select the next layer back, show its shape handles, and again pull that back, exposing the layer underneath. Click in the model view. Now we can reselect the section box, push back on its control, and recreate the section cut. If we zoom in, we can take a better look at those wall layers, then use keynotes to call out the individual materials. Let's go to the Annotate tab, choose the Keynote tool, then place a keynote to call out the core layer of the wall assembly. We'll place that keynote, choose the appropriate division for the material, and place the keynote in our exploded view. We now have an exploded 3D detail that will be easier for many to understand than a typical 2D detail view.